In this video, I want to show you guys how to create the very famous nth Fibonacci function. And essentially what this function is going to do is given an integer n, it's going to return the nth position in the Fibonacci sequence. So as you can see right here, this is the first 10 positions in the Fibonacci sequence. It goes on forever and ever, but for obvious space reasons, I limited it to the very first 10 uh, integers. So say, for example, we give this function the integer 1 it would return the first position in the Fibonacci sequence, which is 0. Say we gave it the integer 4, it would return the fourth position in the Fibonacci sequence, which is 2. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, the Fibonacci sequence can be defined as the very first two numbers are 0 and 1, and every number thereafter can be found by summing the two uh, integers before it. So take, for example, 8. 8 is found by adding 5 and 3. Take for example 21. 21 is found by adding 13 and 8. Now the mathematical formula for this is for n greater than 2 and it's be because uh, by definition the Fibonacci sequence is the very first two integers are 0 and 1. So that's why for n greater than 2 um, Fib of n is equal to Fib of n minus 1 plus Fib of n minus 2. Well here's Fib of n Fib of n minus 1 is 5, plus Fib of n minus 2 is 3, so 5 plus 3 is 8. That's the mathematical formula to find uh, for the nth Fibonacci function, and it will actually be our recursive function call. So uh, let's get to it. The very first, or this function will consist of two parts, um, the base case and the recursive function call. The base case is actually a stopping condition and we need this because um, without a stopping condition or a base case uh, a recursive function would call itself forever and ever and it would never stop so all recursive functions will have a base case um, so let's get into this let's just create the function so I'm going to use the define keyword and we're going to call it fib of n and then we're going to create our base cases. Our base cases are going to be 0 and 1 because remember by definition the very first two items in the uh, in the Fibonacci sequence are 0 and 1. So if n is equal to 2 we're just going to return 1 and if n is equal to 1 we're just going to return 0 because remember n is 2 that's the second position we're going to return 1 if n is 1 we're going to return 0 now for the recursive function call we're just going to it's literally this mathematical formula right here so else we're just going to say return fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. And that is literally it. So if we run this function, we're just going to print fib of, we'll say 6, and we'll save it. So we'll save. Fib of 6 is 5, and if we check, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the sixth position is five. So in the next section of this tutorial, I'm actually going to really go in depth on the blackboard and show you exactly how this function works. I know it can be a bit confusing, but once you see it visually, I'm positive that you guys will completely understand this. So this function starts out right here with our first function call, fib of five. n is five and it passes five up to here, to this n. So for our first function call n, is equal to 5. Now it checks. Is 5 equal to 2? It's not. Is equal to 1? It's not. So it goes to this else condition which is our recursive function call and it does fib of n minus 1, fib of 5 minus 1 plus fib of 5 minus 2. So this will be fib of 4 plus fib of 3. So this will be fib of 4 plus fib of 3 and as you can see, these are two more recursive function calls. So n 
is equal to 4 for this recursive function call and n is equal to 3 for this recursive function call. So n is 4 and it checks is n equal to 2? It's not. Is equal to 1? No. So yet again it goes to another recursive function call and it's fib of n minus 1 which is fib of 4 minus 1 which is fib of 3 plus fib of 4 minus 2 which is fib of 2 and then for n of n equals 3 uh, 3 is not either one of our base cases so it goes to this recursive function call again so this is fib of 2 plus fib of 1 so this will be fib of 2 plus fib of 1 these are all more recursive function calls so n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 likewise over here n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1. Remember with the recursive function calls it's just passing these these n's or these uh, parameters back up to this n right here and it's just continuously going through until we reach a base case. So n is equal to 3. Um, 3 is not any of our base cases so it's going to be yet some more recursive function calls. So 3 minus 1 is 2 so this will be fib of 2 plus fib of 3 minus 2 is 1 so plus fib of 1 n equals 2 well that's actually a base case right here so it's going to return 1 down to this function right here so this is now equal to 1 and for n equals 2 that's a base case so this is going to return 1 to here one to this one and n is equal to one this is going to return zero to here so just to clarify let me digress for a second um, during recursion we continuously call function calls in the form of a stack because this looks like a stack it keeps stacking each other on top of each other until it reaches a base case say for example we reach the base case right here once it hits a base case it no longer is going to be doing recursive function calls and adding to the stack it's now going to work backwards down throughout the throughout the stack until we get back to the very first function so that's how that works it's it's uh, might be confusing at first but it's pretty intuitive once once you're done so we hit the base cases here it's no longer adding to the stack it's now returning it to the to the function where we uh, our previous function anyways so the last recursive function calls we have is here fib of 2 and fib of 1 so n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1 now these are both base cases so n is equal to 2 is we're going to return 1 down to here so this will be 1 plus fib of 1 um, n is equal to 1 so that's going to return 0 down to here so now this is um, 1 plus 0 and this is equal to 1 and this is fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2 this is this part right here so what it does is it actually returns 1 down to this fib of 3 and this is 1 so this is 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 and this again is this part right here so it returns 2 down to uh, this part right here so 2 and for fib of 3 this is 1 plus 0 so this is equal to 1 and it returns 1 just like up here down to fib of 3 so this will be 2 plus 1 and that's going to be equal to 3. So fib of 5 is equal to 3. And that's how all this recursive uh, jargon works with the nth Fibonacci function. I hope that you learned something from this video. And I know it's a little bit complicated, so don't hesitate to watch it more than once. But with some practice, I'm sure that you'll be able to get it. Thanks for watching.
like, comment, and subscribe.